Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. Today I have a quick review for you uh, on this uh, Helm Audio um, Bolt DAC. Uh, these are little dongles with USB-C at one end and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. With uh, so many phones these days not having any headphone output, uh, you're gonna need one of these. Even if they have a headphone output, uh, many of them uh, have very low amount of power and can't drive any audiophile uh, headphones. So these things can be quite useful in getting almost desktop class performance uh, out of them. Now, some are really cheap. You can get the Apple and Google's uh, for nine bucks. Uh, the Apple one's actually quite good, but a lot of the other ones aren't. And so it's important to look at the measurements um, and pricing goes everywhere. Uh, this one, uh, uh, is hundred dollars almost so it's expensive uh, as dongles go though you can go higher than this uh, uh, you can see on Amazon it's ninety nine dollars plus uh, uh, prime free delivery uh, a couple of things are unusual about this one is that it has MQA decoding I know some of you hate MQA <laughs> but uh, it's getting some adoption because some streaming services uh, in US and especially some in China support it so more and more these companies are putting uh, MQA decoding in here. And then uh, the thing that's really unusual, which I hadn't seen uh, here, oh, sorry, I didn't know that you couldn't see the browser, um, is uh, this THX certification. Uh, I didn't know TS THX had come up with any kind of certification. Um, it seems to be some kind of design hygiene. It doesn't say exactly what, but it provides isolation from USB, which is good. USB bus can be, um, Pretty noisy and at any rate dependent on uh, which device you plug it into. Um, it talks about different clocks and what have you. So a little vague, but uh, that's what we test. We test to see if these claims are true. By the way, for testing, I hooked these up to Windows uh, PC. Just plug this into a, my computer and these are fully plug and play with Windows and makes my testing easier because my software analyzer runs on Windows. Um, so, you, you know, when you buy one of these, know that you can use it both on your phone and your your computer. So they're not just limited to that. Um, there are no controls on this. Some of them have volume controls and, and what have you. This one has none, which is a little less convenient. Uh, rather have some physical volume controls on it. But otherwise, it's a pretty robust little chunky thing, which I like. Um, I test this usually as a DAC, meaning that I uh, don't try to load the output down and treat them as if they were normal desktop DAC and see what output they have. A lot of them only output one volt, which is uh, way too low uh, for driving high-impedance headphones. This one outputs two volts, which is quite nice. Um, more would be better, but it's very rare to get more than two volts out of these things. Distortion here is almost minus 100 dB, so below 96 dB of CD format, which is good. And that uh, basically dominates the Synad rating. Synad is sum of noise and distortion, but when one of them is a lot higher than the other, that's the thing that determines it. So uh, uh, if we uh, look at the ranking, if we plug that into every DAC that I've tested, some 350, 400 DACs, it lands in a green zone, which I call very competent. Um, blue is just fantastic, uh, but these dongles don't ever get blue. Most of these dongles are either in orange or many of them in red. So to get into uh, green is, is quite nice. Um, the second test I run on these things is a jitter test. You, I don't know if you saw it in THX. I think there was some mention of oscillators and quality of that. Many times when I run this jitter test, which is this sort of 12 kilohertz tone in here, uh, with these dongles, uh, there's pretty high level of noise and high level of unwanted spikes. Many of them are probably from uh, on the uh, USB uh, uh, bus that's not very well filtered in these little tiny devices, not a lot of room in there. This one's actually very good. The noise floor is way down here, uh, which is for dongle pretty good at minus 150. Desktop products go down to minus 160. It does have this uh, train of pulses in here. Whenever these pulses are symmetrical, uh, on both sides of our 12 color tone, we know they're, they're jitter. These other ones, like, I don't know if these are symmetrical or not, but they're random ones you get that are not symmetrical. Those are just spurious noise that's just getting injected. This test doesn't just measure jitter. It measures anything that comes out of the DAC. 
But in this case, we actually have a clear case of jitter. It, it seems to be at uh, one kilohertz intervals. Um, that's, that's the uh, frame size of USB. So that may be what's causing it. But the nice thing is that the level's at minus 130 dB. So definitely not audible and uh, you know, well below audibility. So it's nice for a dongle again for this class is quite nice. So uh, the most important thing in these things is power. Number one problem with these when they, they get distorted is because they just don't have enough output. Tiny little device can't have you know, huge power electronics in them. And uh, so it's very important to measure power. So as before, I've shown you with headphone amps, we start with a high impedance loan, uh, load like 300 ohm. And here we only get 13 milliwatts. Um, my threshold here is 100 milliwatt, but for desktop products, I'll show you in a second uh, how it ranks. But uh, if we go down here, plug that into every dongle of this type. Some of these dongles are actually quite large, so <laughs> these ones way up here are, are not tiny. But uh, going all the way from uh, little dongles, uh, like this Samsung, my, my phone here is actually here, 3.4 milliwatt. Uh, power Samsung uh, phone that I have uh, going all the way up to this Helm one is 13.3 and you can see most of the ones that are in a good category are 13 to 14 there isn't anything that's this small that puts out more power some of these other ones that have more power actually have batteries in them and what have you so this is actually quite competent switching to a very small load 32 ohm um, we get much more power this is typical we get about 61 uh, milliwatts of power, we plug that in and again we see that it's a uh, you know same category of of good amount of uh, power and so I expect subjective testing which I'll talk about in a minute uh, should be pretty good. Um, I run a test where I switch the load from 600 ohm down to just 12 ohm and then measure noise and distortion. With 600 and 300 ohm the output just goes to two volts and can't output anymore. That's that's all it can do. Once you go to below 50 ohm, uh, at 50 ohm and below, it actually starts clipping, uh, which is this line. And the lower you make the load, it clips earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier. Because as the resistance goes up, the need for the current goes up. But if you have limited current, you just can't go as far as you could with a higher impedance lo load. Um, this table is very useful because you can look up the impedance of your headphone and find the nearest one in here and go find a clipping point because you don't want to go past the clipping point. So this little knees at, the, at, at these points. Look down here, so what the voltage is. Plug it into in, he, in here, voltage squared divided by whatever the impedance is over here, and that'll tell you how much power you're going to get. Um, so this is a newer test as I run it more and more. You'll be able to basically compute the amount of power you have at all the impedances, not just the two that I was showing you previously. Uh, subjective testing is quite important on these things because some of these dongles can handle momentary peaks of power more than what I'm showing here. These are continuous power, both channels del del uh, uh, driven. Whereas in music, you may get a bass spike that's you know a few milliseconds. So I find that subjectively, some of them sound better than others. So uh, you know you do you have to listen. Uh, measurements are good. It's a good baseline, but we also listen. I uh, plug in always my Ether CX 25 ohm headphone, which I expect these dongles to not be able to drive. But this little guy had no trouble driving it, and he drove it to medium level volume, which was good enough, enjoyable, usable. Uh, very surprising, which was good. And then I switched to the classic HD 650 Sennheiser, and it got loud, So, uh, which which was great. Uh, I mean, you basically don't need more than that. Even in a noisy environment, you should be able to listen to it. So subjectively, is very good. Uh, objectively, is very good. I think there's one product that I've seen, and I recommend this because of that. Uh, there's one product I like better than this, uh, which I reviewed, uh, Hides or Hides, or however it's pronounced, the S8. And this used to be $129, so more expensive. It's a bigger dongle, but it has got much better specs in here. This is desktop class uh, Synad here. You can see the distortion is less than 120B. Superb product, uh, similar power, but it was $129, but somebody just pointed out that it's gone down to $80 on Amazon. So if it's $80 and you can accept this kind of form factor where you got to bring your own cable, um, this is a preferred device to, to this one. But if you have this or you can get a cheap air or what have you, this is a great product.
Okay, keep this uh, short and sweet. Uh, see you in the next review. Bye-bye.